Look, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining this. These are the greatest dumplings of all time. I could eat 4,000 of them in one sitting. What more do you wanna know? You need this. So today we're making soup dumplings, also known as xiaolongbao. Xiaolongbao? Wow, sounds really close to what I said, I hope. I think that a lot of people get scared when it comes to making these, right? If you've had them before, you go, man, how'd they get the soup in here? What are they ingesting this or something? What kind of crazy sack of juice is this? It's simpler than you think. It just comes down to technique and understanding what to do. I honestly think this is something that anybody can make. If you make it for a dinner party, people are gonna think you're the coolest of all time. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Not only one of the greatest, most mystical foods on the planet, but it's actually surprisingly easy to make. So let's do it justice. I'm gonna break this down into three elements because it's just like any other dumpling. There's the filling, the dumpling dough, and of course, the dipping sauce. Wait, Josh, what about the juicy, juicy squirt squirt? How in tarnation did they get the soup in there? It was actually with chicken or pork stock that's been reduced and chilled into a gel, similar to an aspic. Sorry, what? Yeah, it's called an aspic, which by the way, in most culinary cases, sucks. Anyway, solidified broth that then melts when heated. See where we're going here? Right. So let's begin with our broth. In a medium sauce pot, add just enough oil to coat the bottom of the pan and heat to medium high. Once that's Add in two to three green onions sliced into one inch pieces, sear those bad boys, tossing occasionally for two to three minutes or until lightly charred. Remove from the pan and add half a pound or 225 grams of boneless pork Boston butt cut into two to three big chunks and let that sear for two to three minutes per side just to get some nice browning. Don't worry about cooking it through, all right? It's gonna cook later. Remove from the pot and now add one and a half pounds or 680 grams of pork neck bones, which have already been rinsed with cold water to remove any impurities. Then add your roasty toasty meat, three quarters of a pound or 454 grams of pork skin cut into manageable pieces. Now look, this stuff is super cheap. Please do not skip it. It helps it be gelatinous. And it helps give almost a creamy tonkotsu style broth. Almost, not exactly. And you can find it at most Asian markets or just cut it off some pork belly that you bought. Now follow that with your green onion and a one inch knob of ginger thinly sliced. Cover that with five cups or a little over one liter of water. And look, if there's not enough water covering it, then you can just add an extra cup just to have it submerged. Now set that over medium high, bring to a boil, then immediately reduce to a simmer, skim off any scum that rises to the top and reduce for two to two and a half hours or until you're left with just two and a half to three cups of broth. Then remove all the bones, strain everything through strainer and into a flat container like the shallow third pan. Season that generously with salt, let it cool close to room temp, then wrap with plastic wrap and chill in the fridge for at least four hours, but ideally overnight. By the way, if you don't do pork or you want a chicken version, you can very easily just pop in four chicken carcasses or about four pounds worth into a baking dish along with the same aromatics, cover with three quarters of a cup of water, tightly cover with foil and roast at 450 for one hour and you'll pull out a very concentrated broth that simply needs straining and chilling. I much prefer the pork version and it tastes much more nostalgic to me, but I'm just trying to give you options. All right, so let's pretend it's the next day. Now, before we make our filling, you need to realize that you cannot have a dumpy sans dumpy dough. No if, ands, or but. So your rubber dough needs to be homemade, but good news, it only requires two ingredients. First, in a medium-sized bowl, add one and a quarter cup or 170 grams of all-purpose flour. Yes, this one is grams because the hydration percentage makes a big difference. Anyway, begin stirring that with a fork while constantly stirring in three and a half tablespoons or 50 grams of hot water. I want it scalded, brother. Stir until all the water is absorbed by the flour and then stir in three tablespoons or 40 grams of just room temperature water. Once it begins to form a dough, start kneading by hand. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it's too hot or not on account of my asbestos restaurant hands, but uh, if it's unmanageable, you know, maybe put on some gloves or something, I don't know. Anyway, knead that for five to eight minutes or until you get a beautifully smooth dough like this. Wrap that in plastic wrap and rest at room temperature for 45 minutes. Now, while that's resting, let's make our filling. In a medium sized bowl, add one pound or 450 grams of ground pork with a high fat percentage. That lean ground pork ain't gonna cut it. I ground my own because much of what was at the market was too lean and I was frustrated. So I just ground some Boston butt roast with a few pieces of pork fat back added just for a little bit extra. Fatty. But if you're buying it at the store, please look for pork that's around 70% lean to match that. Knead your ground pork till nice and emulsified. And to that, you'll add three green onions, very finely minced, a pinch of ground white pepper, half a teaspoon or two grams of granulated sugar, half a teaspoon or two grams of salt, two tablespoons or 30 grams of soy sauce, one and a half tablespoons or 22 grams of Shaoxing wine, half a teaspoon or three grams of toasted sesame oil. Give it a little pat for being so good. And knead it together until thoroughly combined and homogenous. Now this is where our broth gel comes into play. Once it's fully chilled, scrape off any solidified fat off the top, and then using a spatula, 
just separate it from the sides of your container and pop it out onto a cutting board and cut that broth sheet into half inch cubes, being gentle and careful not to break them into little pieces. You want them to look like little umami diamonds. Ooh, mommy. Gather about one cup or 235 grams of that broth gel. Add it to your pork mixture and gently fold that together until evenly incorporated. Look, it's okay if it breaks into little pieces at this stage, but you definitely want nice generous handfuls of broth dispersed. It's a beautiful sight. Okay, it's shaping time. This is the only part that's gonna be a bit of a challenge for people who've never done it, but hey, this is where you get good. Now separate the rest of dumpling dough into two pieces, roll those out into long rods, about one inch thick, cut off segments weighing 10 to 15 grams each. That's 20 to 25 dumpers, y'all. Take one of your balls and dusting with flour as needed, roll it into a beautifully round disc that's about three and a half inches in diameter, then grab a heaping tablespoon of filling, add it to the center of the disc, and look, if you've never done this, please be patient. Don't expect it to be perfect on your first try. If you've pleated regular gyoza dumplings, then this should be pretty familiar. All you're gonna do is cup your dough, grab a piece of that, carefully fold it over itself to create a little, well, pleat. Stick that fold onto itself and then repeat each little pleat, one next to the other, as close to the previous pleat, until you've made your way all the way around the whole dumpling. And it's mostly closed up. You know that you've done it right when you're left with sort of a hole at the top, keep your mind out of the gutter. Gently pinch and twist your hole shut. And that is a gap dang soup dumpling, if I ever seen one. Again, this takes practice, so repeat this process with all of your pieces of dough. Each dumpling you do will be better than the last. It's about the new things that come along that you have no experience with. And whether you like it or not, you learn how to utilize it. Yeah, that's what uh, dumplings are gonna teach you. Now, the dumplings are done and you're ready to cook them. All you need to do is cut out little squares of parchment about four by four inches. Place your dumplings on each piece of parchment individually and you're ready to steam. Add a shallow one and a half inch depth of water in a pot, bring that to a boil over medium high, then reduce the temp to medium. Load up a bamboo steamer with as many dumplings as you can, leaving at least half an inch of space in between them. Please do not overcrowd this bad boy. Now pop the lid on and place your basket on your steaming pot and well, let it steam for eight minutes. You could twiddle your thumbs while that steams or you could make the perfect dipping sauce, which consists of two tablespoons or 17 grams of spicy chili crisp solids and a third cup or 88 grams of Chinese black vinegar. Yep, that's it. You could also add a splash of red vinegar to this if you're feeling a little bit naughty. Now serving this is very simple. Obviously the dumplings will be presented as is, but very important to serve the sauce. Place it in a nice little ramekin or pinch bowl. My mom made this pinch bowl, by the way. Thank you, mom. To that sauce, add a few threads of very finely julienne fresh ginger. And you're gonna do that for each individual serving of sauce. It's a game changer, don't skip. Now at this point, your dumplings are done and all there's left to do is bite a little hole, get a little slurp of broth, dunk that failure into the sauce, and throw what is surely to be one of the best bites of food you'll ever have in the history of your home cooking. Yes, I'm serious. Now let's taste test this to see what I'm talking about here. XLB, baby. That's my next album, Zhao Long Bao. I just bust it. Because these soup dumplings sure do look fine. You already saw the B-roll, you saw the dribble, you saw the drip. I mean, look at these. They look stunning. They've got a sheen. You pick them up, mommy. Right, how do you eat a soup dumpling? Well, you take a little bite, and then you pour the soup out. And at this point, you can kind of eat it however you want. Although the way that I like to do it is give that little opening, that hole, you now are going to fill with your dipping sauce. Scoop it up in there. Now it's refilled. You have your soup. Give the soup a little sip. Oh! Go to another dimension and then combine it all. That just sent me to another hemisphere. I don't even know what that means. I would argue that it is better, not just because it tastes better or it has a better texture or I made it with my own tooth frickin' hands, but because it has customizability. You can do whatever you want with these soup dumplings. This is a guide that should direct you and you should march forward on your treacherous path of making the greatest soup dumpling that you'll ever place in your mouth. Should you wanna put anything else in your mouth ever again? No, this is what goes in your mouth. Ha! You wanna know what else shoots hot juices into your mouth after one bite? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our soup dumpling slash Xiao Long Bao. One thing I want you to realize, there are many, 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 many ways that you can make this. This is just a base level. You can make it fancier, add truffle to it. You could put caviar on top if you wanna be really fancy. It can be made so many different ways. But the one thing that doesn't change is that pop of juicy yum yum in the mouth. Soup dumpling is the alpha and omega of both noodle soups and chewable dumplings. It's just the perfect marriage. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.